This is a shop in the dark. Hello, a shock in the dark. I am an evil and creepy stalker. I want people to understand how I became a stalker. I believe this will be incredibly enlightening. Consider this my confession. By the way, that's what you should name this video. Stalker confesses, tells all. And make sure there's a shocked looking person and something circled in red, maybe a red arrow. Apparently that's what you need if you want people to click on your video these days. Anyway, my becoming a stalker had innocent beginnings. Even I didn't know at the time that I was about to change into one of those scary stalkers you hear about. Here's the story. A few years back, I had just turned 25 years old. I was single and still living with my parents at their house in a fairly wealthy town in New Jersey. I was undercover security, loss prevention, at a bookstore in the mall, which was only a few miles away from the house. Because I was so close, I would often walk to my job. Then when I was done, I would change to my sweatpants and running shoes and jog home. I had gained an extra 10 pounds since I got out of the military, and I was going to apply for my local police department, so I wanted to work off that extra weight. So this was a perfect arrangement. One Saturday, I'm working at the bookstore in plain clothes, watching for shoplifters, when I got a call in my earpiece. The manager of the store asked me to go to the romance section because there was a suspicious woman in that section who seemed to be looking over her shoulder a lot, fiddling with her bag. So I casually make my way over there and randomly pick up a book so I look like just another customer. The suspicious person was a girl, about 20 years old, carrying an oversized bag. She had a super short haircut, but for her, it worked. She basically looked like Natalie Portman in that V is for Victory movie. So, the girl moves one aisle over, and slowly, so do I. I'm far away enough that she won't notice that I keep switching to whatever aisle she's on. I see that she's wearing a t-shirt with something like a math equation on the front. It took me a little bit to figure out exactly what it said, but basically, the math equation, which, when you read it out loud, says, I ate pie. Wow. Cute girl. And funny. Smart. But might be a thief. So I continue the surveillance. Just as I've figured out what the shirt says, I look up at the same time she does. And I came extremely close to her seeing me reading her shirt. I gotta be stealth. Luckily, I was able to quickly divert my eyes before she could look my way. The manager was right. She did keep moving her bag around in a weird way. I couldn't tell what she was doing, but she did keep reaching into her bag. I was about to approach her for a close pass to see what she was up to, but the store manager came up to me quietly to tell me he was now convinced the girl was not shoplifting. Crisis averted. When I turned around, she was gone. A few minutes later, the front counter asked me to come down there. I go down and the cashier tells me that a lady had just left the store and left her wallet at the counter. Since she had just left, the cashier gave me the description of the girl and direction of travel, and it was the girl with the bag. I grab the wallet and run out the front door and search for this girl everywhere. Finally, I see that she is just pulling out of the parking lot. I run towards the auto exit, but I can't make it there before she pulls out onto the street and drives away. I go back to the store and to the manager's office. We open up the wallet and look at her driver's license. Turns out her house is on my way home. It's time for me to clock out anyway, so when I get done changing into my jogging gear, I take the wallet with me. Eventually I come to her house. I walk down the driveway and knock on the door. There's no answer. I knock a few times, but nobody comes to the door. I'm about to walk away, but then I hear something. It's voices coming from the backyard. So I walk around to the back where there's a fence. I peek over, and there are two girls in a swimming pool. Excuse me! 
I shout, but they can't hear me. Hello? They still can't hear me over the radio and the splashing. Finally, I yell as loud as I can. Hey! They notice me and turn down the music. Uh, is Barbara here? That was the name on the driver's license. They tell me there is no one by that name that lives there. Hmm, odd. Maybe she never changed her address on her license? So I go to leave, but then I notice her car, the one she drove out of the parking lot, is parked in the driveway. It was there when I walked up, but I hadn't really made that connection, so I go back to the front door and knock again. I still don't get an answer. I don't want to leave her wallet with the girls in the pool. I have no idea what their relationship is, so digging a little deeper in the wallet, I find a cell phone bill with what I'm assuming is her number. I whip out my cell phone and call. A female answers. Hello? Hi, this is Charles from the bookstore. I've got your wallet. Um, I'm actually at your house right now. Hello? Do you want your wallet back? Um, look, I'm not just gonna leave this wallet on your porch. Hello? Hello? Weird. Yeah, she just hung up on me right when I was trying to talk to her, and she didn't say a thing. I try to call back a couple of times, but it goes straight to voicemail, so I'm torn. I stand there for a minute, trying to figure out what to do, but eventually, I leave the wallet, somewhat hidden behind a plant, but easily visible for anyone leaving the house. Then, I use the rest of the two miles back to my house for my daily jog. It was about one week later that I officially became a creepy stalker. I didn't want to. I didn't mean to. But here's how it happened. A friend of mine called me laughing and saying, Hey, Charles, this is an intervention. You have got to stop stalking women, you creep. What are you talking about, man? He sends me the link. This Barbara had posted a crazy story on her Facebook page, complete with footage from her security camera of me. Here is her post. First of all, I am safe. I am okay, so please don't worry, but I really thought I was going to be killed on Saturday. Let this be a warning to all the women out there. Always be aware of your surroundings. Saturday, I was at the bookstore at the mall when I noticed this creepy guy just standing there leering at me. I acted casual and walked to another aisle, and sure enough, he comes over to that aisle too. I start getting really nervous, but maybe it was a coincidence. So I move aisles again, and so does he. He's following me. A minute later, I take a peek at him, and he's just standing there staring at my boobs. Like, for a full minute. So I decide to be safe. I just cut my visit short, I go pay for the one book I was able to get, and leave. As I'm driving out of the parking lot at the mall, I see this creeper again. His face is red, and he looks like he's in full rage as he starts running straight for my car at full speed. I floor it. I almost wreck my car right as he gets to my passenger side. He tries to open the door. Luckily, I had remembered to lock it. So, I finally get home. I'm trying to watch and make sure that he's not following me the whole way there. And I'm shaking so hard I can barely steer the car, but I make it. Janae and Carol are out in the pool. I go out and tell them everything that just happened, and I'm on the verge of a nervous breakdown. I go inside and collapse on the couch and just cry. A few minutes later, I hear a knock at the door. I turn on our front security camera, and it's the creep. He must have followed me from the store, and I am freaking out. I don't know what to do. 
He continues to knock on the door, and he just starts banging on the door, and I am frozen. Soon, the knocking stops. My relief is short-lived, though, when I see the top of his head pass by the living room side window. He's going around back. I run to the back where Carol and Janae can see me, but make sure I'm in a spot where the creeper can't see me from the gate. This guy just screams at the top of his lungs. Hey! Where's Barbara? I'm waving my arms in the air and making the I'm not here sign. I don't live here. You don't know me. Luckily, Carolyn knows what I'm up to. And she says, there's nobody named Barbara that lives here. So the creep leaves. Or so I thought. Two minutes later, he's back beating on my front door. I pick up my phone to call the police. But as soon as I do, my phone rings. I say hello, and I hear heavy breathing. It's him. It's the creep. And he says in this really creepy voice, I saw you at the bookstore. I just froze in fear. I guess you're supposed to have flight or fight. I've only got freeze. Then he says, I got your wallet. You want it back, don't you? But I'm not saying anything. Finally, I snap out of it. And before I hang up, I just hear him say, I'm not leaving. I immediately call the police and I tell 911 what's happening. And the operator has me stay on the phone and says that the police are on their way. I peek out the front window and he's just standing there staring at my house. I guess he must have heard the sirens because he suddenly just takes off and makes his getaway down the street. The cops show up. I tell them the whole story, but they didn't catch the guy. They did, however, find my wallet on the front porch. I told them to tack pickpocketing charges onto the stalking charges when they catch him. The police said the wallet must have fallen out of his pocket when he ran away. So, now this scary creep knows where I work, where I bank, where I go to the gym, my phone number, and I am scared to leave the house. But Janae gave me her pepper spray, so I feel a little better about it now. Please always be aware of your surroundings and buy some pepper spray or some kind of protection. These creeps are everywhere. End of Facebook post. So, yeah, that's how I became a creepy stalker. For the record... Again, I didn't mean to edit. Here are the answers to your questions. Yes, I did end up getting a job as a police officer in my city. Two, yes, I did end up reaching out to the girl to let her know I worked security at the bookstore and was just trying to return her wallet. I think she still believed I was a creeper, but... She ended up talking to the manager of the bookstore who explained everything to her and backed up my story. You didn't ask, but I'll tell you. Her post stayed up for a few months after that. I was worried it would affect me getting a law enforcement job, so I had the manager ask her to take it down. And she eventually did, but she never apologized. That's fine. The most important thing to me, I would just hate to know that I was the cause of some girl's unnecessary phobia or PTSD. Thanks again. Love your show. Keep up the great work. Hello, a shock in the dark. I'll remain anonymous for this if you don't mind. Here's the simplest, shortest version of my resume. I know it will sound like I'm boasting, but I want you to understand who I am. I have a severe health issue and recently found out that I'm not long for this world. I don't have time to care about what people think. So, I started out as what you would probably call a goth kid who was always fascinated by religion and the occult. 
Before I was a teenager, I had studied and participated in voodoo, hoodoo, santeria, Hellenism, Celtic, polytheism, peyote religion, every aspect of Christianity from Catholicism to Pentecostals and Charismatics, eventually working my way all the way up to serpent handlers. I've submersed myself in so many amazing, fascinating cultures as varied as Judaism and Islam to Hinduism and Taoism, Buddhism, Satanism, devil worship, everything you can imagine. I have two master's degrees, one in religious studies, one in religious history, but the real learning I've done has been in the field. I've done my own share of exploring haunted places and people, as well as possessed people and objects with attachments. Full disclosure, most of my work has been through the Catholic Church, even though I'm not Christian or Catholic. I'm agnostic, just in case you're interested. Generally, I'm on call 24 hours a day for people who need my expertise for deep research in cases of exorcisms, and sometimes to help investigators understand a case, add some context. Bottom line, I know what I'm talking about. I've been listening to your show, and a few shows like it, and I've seen plenty of movies and TV shows that deal with the occult, both scripted and documentary style, and I have to give you credit for not being as sensationalized as most of the stuff out there. I believe that you believe what you're saying, which puts you way ahead of the pack. That being said, you and your listeners are not always correct, but Across YouTube and message boards, I see so much bad information out there. I figure it's time to set the record straight. Some people may disagree with me, but those people are what you would call completely wrong. To be blunt, I know maybe three, four people who are still alive who know more about this stuff than I do. Here are the main points I would like to make. One. There's really no such thing as an evil ghost. Well, they're insanely rare. Ghosts are former people, and they have hardly any power whatsoever. 99% of the time, a ghost that appears to you is a family member. Two, if something scary is happening, most of the time, that's going to be something demonic. If you've got scary stuff going on at your house, get rid of it before it turns into a full-on horror show. The longer you wait, the worse it will get. Again, I'm not Catholic or Christian, but the Catholic Church is actually super organized to handle this sort of thing. That would be my personal first call. Number three, there are many fine people who do paranormal investigations. I have many friends in that field, but... I would never ask a ghost hunting team to investigate my house. There are exceptions, of course, but generally their goal is to collect evidence. Their goal is not to help you. And it's my opinion, but I feel like the bulk of these investigators are people who have lots of equipment and very little brains. Or they'll come in and antagonize the situation to get their evidence and then leave. Leave you holding the bag. Number four, unless you really know what you're doing, you really shouldn't play with Ouija boards, pendulums, turret cards. Sorry, but anytime you communicate with the dead, you absolutely are putting yourself at risk. Think of it like a gun. A gun is a tool that can be used by people who are trained to do so. You do not want a bunch of drunk people at a party playing with a gun. So you don't want a bunch of drunk people at a party playing with a spirit board. Number five, psychics and energy readers and healers and empathic and people with special abilities are real. They do exist, but an actual psychic medium is very rare. They aren't out there doing TV shows and trying to be famous. Many of them have a difficult time coming to terms with their abilities. But if you want to know if a psychic is real or not, here's a test. A real psychic medium isn't vague. 
and isn't wrong. Of the few psychic mediums I know, they would never say something as pitiful as, is there someone in your life that has the letter O in their name? Wow, impressive stuff, huh? Lastly, I would just like to say, if you want to get rid of a ghost, here are the things I would try and in the order I would try them. First thing I would try, ask them to leave. It sounds crazy, but I find this actually works in most cases. If you see an apparition, I would recommend you invoke God or Jesus and ask it where it's going. If it's a confused ghost or someone who's unaware that they're dead, this will kind of snap them out of it. and They'll realize what's happening and leave. The phrase I use for this, for example, dates back to the turn of the century. I say, In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, where are you going? If none of that works for you, you can cleanse your space with sage. I like sage with dragon's blood, personally. Just make sure the sage is properly harvested. Really, anything beyond that would require a professional. I would recommend contacting any religious organization or, and good luck on this, finding a real psychic medium. Anyway, I just wanted to drop you this note and clear up a few things that drive me nuts every single time I hear it and pass along some of the knowledge I've picked up over the last 65 years. Please keep up the great work, and my cell phone number is below. Reach out to me anytime, day or night. Hi, a shock. I'm a 26-year-old male. This story happened back in 2010 when I was a teenager, and my brother was six years old. My dad worked installing satellite TVs. His partner, Eddie, who went out on all his jobs with him, lived next door to us. One Monday during the summer, my dad called and woke me up and my brother. He said he was at the office with the truck loaded up and ready to go, but Eddie still wasn't there. He said since my mom was also at work, it would be up to me to go bang on Eddie's door and wake him up and let him know he's late. I didn't want to leave my brother at the house alone, so I brought him along with me. We ran the about a hundred yards or so down to Eddie's place, knocked on the door, but there was no answer. Holding my brother's hand, I walked around to the back of the house and knocked on his bedroom window. When he didn't answer again, I cupped my hands to the window, but Eddie was nowhere to be seen. Finally, as we were about to leave, I tried the sliding patio door in the back. It opened. Me and my brother went in, called out his name, but still there was nothing. When we got to the living room, we saw Eddie. He was clearly no longer alive. Eddie had suffered a heart attack and died on his couch watching TV the night before. The remote control was still in his hand. A plate of food was on a small dinner tray in front of him. That image will stay with me forever. It seemed like I had stared at Eddie for hours, but I'm sure it was only a few seconds before my brother just started screaming and pulling on my arm trying to run away. I grabbed his hand and we got out of there as fast as we could. We ran home and called Dad. He left to come back home immediately. On his way, he called an ambulance and police to come over. <sighs> Later that night, our dad and mom sat us down to talk to me and my brother about what we had seen that day. I guess to make sure we weren't psychologically damaged by the whole ordeal. They started with my brother. They said to him, you want to tell us what happened when you went to Eddie's house today? It was scary, my brother said. Scary? My dad asked. You know Eddie. Eddie has always been a good friend to us. No matter what the circumstances are, you should not be scared of anyone that is our friend, including Eddie. My brother wrinkled his brow like he was in deep thought before, then looking confused. I'm not scared of Eddie, he said. 
I was afraid of that other man. As it turns out, my brother hadn't even seen Eddie. When we had entered the living room, my brother had seen a man standing directly in front of Eddie's TV. When asked further about the other man, my brother called him the Skeleton Man. He ended up describing him as a man with a, quote, skeleton head and wearing a big black dress with a hoodie. My little brother was describing the stereotypical personification of death, the hooded skeleton. My parents looked shocked. They, they tried to play it cool, but I could tell they were afraid or at least uneasy. To my knowledge, my brother had never seen that image of death until that day at Eddie's house. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe my little brother is sensitive to the paranormal, but any time I try to bring it up with him, he deflects the conversation. He just won't talk about anything of that type. As for me and mom and dad, none of us have ever had a paranormal experience, well, at least since then. But that one time my six-year-old brother saw death, that's enough for me to now believe that at least some paranormal stories are true. And even if it's only a tiny percentage of paranormal stuff that's true, that makes me more nervous than anything my brother ever said. You've been listening to A Shock in the Dark. For a free subscription to this series, push the subscribe button. To get an alert when the next episode posts, push the bell notification symbol. Post your questions or comments to the narrator in the comment section below. To contribute your recorded or personal story for this series, send it in an email to a shock in the dark at gmail.com. Until next time, good night, whoever you are.